I want us to talk today about the concept of brainwashing as it relates to the narcissist approach toward you. Now, when we tend to think in terms of brainwashing, we often think about domination systems. And sure enough, there's a lot going on there. And when we talk about brainwashing, we're referring to a very deliberate and persistent effort to alter and control another person's beliefs or preferences or priorities. And sure enough, within larger systems, uh, that can happen. Sometimes the system is an extended family. Sometimes it might even be a religious group or organization. Sometimes it can be a political organization or just uh, some sort of social organization that you might belong with. Sometimes it might be a group of people in a social work sometimes a place, and sometimes it may be your place of work where there's a very, very strong fixed notion about how things there ought to be. No disagreements are allowed. But then when we talk about the systems, it always starts with individuals. And narcissists are very drawn towards the brainwashing manner of approach toward you because it suits their purpose if they can do what brainwashers do, which is alter and control your way of thinking and doing and prioritizing. Does that sound very familiar to you? Narcissists insist that you have to align who you are with who they are. And, and I'm not talking about just in a healthy coordinating kind of way, but I'm talking about uh, those individuals being driven by their own arrogance and their own condescension toward you, insisting that you've got to lay down whatever you bring to the equation that makes you distinct and you have to go along with their way of thinking. The narcissist is constantly want, wondering, how can I elevate myself by diminishing you. And basically, there are two uh, primary tools they have in their shed. One is they want to uh, get you to doubt the validity of your core beliefs or your core preferences. And then number two, they want to fill you with themselves. And that's basically what brainwashing comes down to. Now, here's how it works. First and foremost, whenever you're exposed to a narcissist that's in this brainwashing mode, there is lots, and I mean lots, of criticism. How many times have you been around certain individuals, those narcissistic controlling individuals, and you think, I can't do anything right. I can't please them. Nothing I say or do fits into their paradigm. And that narcissist is thinking, right, because you, you just don't bring goodness. You don't bring decency. Let me tell you another thing that you've done wrong. And as a result, another thing that goes along with the brainwashing pattern is that narcissist will speak to you using many imperatives. Now, that's a, a term that I like to use as a shorthand for saying they have lots of directives that are unbending. And there are certain key words that are a part of the imperative mindset, have to, must, got to, should, supposed to, can't, had better. And, and many, many times over, th those words are either spoken or they're implied. In addition, along with the, uh, the brainwashing, there's this uh, repetitive notion that says, if there's a problem between you and me, it has to be your fault because clearly I know what's right and clearly you do not know what's right. And so if there's a problem, we have to correct you and get you back over here into the fold. And then that having been said, part of the brainwashing implies your opinions are not only not wanted, but you actually don't have the right to be separate and distinct and to have uh, thoughts and ideas that differ from the group norm. And there's a lot of group think that's pushed upon you. Uh, that being the case, you can see that in the narcissistic system of brainwashing, there's a very strong emphasis on hierarchy. I'm at the top of the stack, there are people at the middle, and then there's you. And so there, there's lots of uh, reminders. You are not in the power position. I am, and that means you have to submit to me. You have to subordinate your thoughts. You have to yield. You have to, uh, to go along with the program. Now, you can see that another part of the, uh, the domination is there's, there's not just a little bit. There's zero interest in seeing you thrive and grow on a personal level. I, I recall one guy, he was telling me that uh, he was caught uh, by his father-in-law reading a book 
and it had some historical references about A, B, and C. The, the topic wasn't all that important to, to my uh, point here. But the father-in-law was like, why would you have to read something like that? And his comment was, well, I just like to read about history, and, and I like to, uh, uh, to learn. And just rolled his eyes and says, you do not need to read those kind of things in my house. And that's the way they think. No, don't, don't uh, expand. Uh, we don't need you to do that. I don't want you to grow. In addition, uh, nars- the, the, the brainwashing narcissist thrives upon keeping you in a guilt-worthy position. Uh, if you have divergent thoughts or beliefs or preferences, then shame on you. You're not supposed to have that. And as a result, there are many demeaning messages that that narcissist, in their attempts to brainwash you, are going to uh, throw into your direction. And when I say demeaning messages, it's messages like, you are pitiable. You're an embarrassment. You're simply wrong. You are inadequate. You're also a disruptive feature around here. You're a joke. You're a disgrace. You're immoral. You're ungodly. You're unattractive. You're chronically flawed. You're unacceptable. You're ill-informed. You're a nuisance. You are not a tolerable person. I wonder how many times you've been on the receiving end of messages like that. And over time, even though you don't like it, it just whittles away at your resolve. And that's part of the brainwashing. It's not just a one-off kind of message. They just uh, keep coming at you over and over and over with these same kind of messages. And the notion is, I'm hoping that in time, I'm going to wear down your sense of resolve. Now, let's understand that behind the scenes, when we're talking about a person who's willing to try to brainwash you, this is the height of arrogance. And that's part of the defining feature of narcissism. There's such a sense of condescension that these individuals bring. It's like, no, you need me to teach you how to think, and you're not going to do very well in life unless you filter everything through me. But then there's another thought for you to hold on to, and that is it's virtually never, I hope you hear this, fact-based, okay? When a narcissist feels the need to brainwash you, inevitably they're either skewing the facts and just uh, ignoring certain elements or they're just flat out lying to you. And uh, instead, that narcissistic individual has one um, main th- uh, goal in mind, and that is to preserve their own sense of superiority. Now, in, in the meantime, these individuals who feel the need to brainwash you are profoundly insecure. What's so hard about that person saying, well, you think differently from me. Why don't we put it out on the table so that we can all have the advantage of having a broad variety of thoughts that we draw upon? Let's learn from each other. Why is that so hard? Whenever you disagree or you're just simply different, they take that as some sort of refutation against them. They take that as an insult because their, their self-esteem is so shaky. It's, it's so contingent upon making other people believe the false um, self that they are living inside of. Uh, these uh, brainwashing narcissists, instead, they'll go with an authoritarian style that says, look, there's a certain way things ought to be, and <laughs> lucky for you, I'm here to uh, let you know what all that is. But it illustrates, as they continue in their brainwashing efforts, that they have a fundamental lack of relationship basics. You know, characteristics like honor and respect and understanding, and harmonizing, or curiosity, or self-restraint, they don't get it. Now, as you uh, try to figure out how am I going to respond to this, there are a couple of main things I'm hoping you can focus on. And number one is just recognize the pattern. That's why I'm bringing it out to you. Recognize the pattern for what it is. And at the base of it all, when a person attempts to brainwash you, it's abuse. Do you hear me? It's abuse. This is the mind of a bully that's trying to uh, to make a mockery of you. You need to see it for what it is. There's nothing good when somebody says, I'm trying to take over your mind. And then uh, again, as you're trying to figure out how to respond to this, I'm hoping you can then ask yourself, why would I ever choose to lay down my distinctives in an ongoing effort 
to appease this person and put up with the crock of that this person is dishing out at me. Why would I ever want to do that? Bottom line is you deserve better and you can do better. So I'm hoping that as you uh, try to figure out how you're going to respond to that brainwashing narcissist, uh, you can latch on to a very strong and profound notion that says uh, you're never going to reach your potential as long as you're continuing, continuing to lay down your uniqueness and purpose uh, or your uniqueness for the purpose of appeasing an abusive bully. It's simply not a way to live. Instead, I'm hoping you can consider the source of that, uh, who that person is and what they're bringing. And in the meantime, you can lock into true truth about yourself. I have a good mind. I have a capable mind. The narcissist does not see it. They don't appreciate it. But nonetheless, I'm, I'm at my best when I pay close attention to the one person that I respect the most. And that person is myself. Narcissists, sure enough, are bullies. They're too insecure to allow you to be what you are because they're so busy protecting their false self. I hope you can see that. And when they come at you with all of this brainwashing effort, it's like, thanks, but no thanks. I can see straight through your efforts. It makes no sense to me. It's not going to get me anyplace good. And in doing so, I'm hoping you can dedicate yourself to being that person of dignity, respect, and civility, because in doing so, that's how you find your sense of peace.